When I started studying light, I, I guess I didn't know what to expect. I, I hadn't really thought about what is light. There are a lot of different ways of thinking about light, just like there are a lot of different ways of thinking about anything. It's not just the red wavelengths to the blue wavelengths that our eye can pick up. That's just a very narrow window of the electromagnetic spectrum. But uh, it also tells us about things out to the highest energy uh, photons like gamma rays that are made when stars explode, uh, down to low energy photons like microwaves that are still around from the Big Bang in the cosmic microwave background. So you can learn about so many different aspects of the natural world by studying electromagnetic radiation, which is light. Light is a remarkably subtle natural phenomenon. It's also very important and ubiquitous, and it has a lot of roles to play in emerging technologies. We do lots of interesting, interesting things with light. We, uh, a lot of our detectors are designed to measure light in different ways. And light's sort of a, a strange, a strange thing. It's a strange material, really. Um, it's this, uh, this uh, particle-like. Um, it's also wave-like. It's got lots of really, really interesting properties. And one thing that we uh, that we try and do is try and measure the energy that a photon has. A photon is a quantum of the electromagnetic field, and it comes in discrete packets and each one of those has an energy that's proportional to the frequency of the light. One thing that we hope to be able to do here in the next couple of months is, is to say, yeah, I know I got a photon and there were four of them in that particular pulse. And the next pulse, maybe it's five or six. And then the next pulse, maybe it's two. But you always know exactly how many photons you got. And the idea is not just to detect the photons, but on the same chip to also produce the same photon so that I can say, give me a photon and then detect the photon over here, all on something that's about that big. Here we are in the, uh, the photolithography bay. And the first thing you'll notice, other than I'm standing next to a really big tool, is that uh, the light in here is yellow. So the reason that the light is yellow in here is because the photoresist that we use is very sensitive to blue light. So we want to make sure there's no blue light around at all. Photolithography is a standard technique that was basically developed by the microelectronics industry to produce really small structures in an extremely reproducible way. So um, for, for many devices, everything from the processor inside your computer to um, fluidic channels that are used for diagnosing cellular diseases. And basically what I use it for is to draw um, nanowires on a on a waveguide so I have a waveguide that directs light in a certain direction and confines it from spreading out and uh, I can route the light around in that waveguide and I can also use different components to steer it to different places or to modulate its intensity and time. The clean room is the location where you can keep all these tools in an environment where the sort of dust and normal um, uncontrolled substances in the air won't affect the performance of the tools. There are a lot of core infrastructure items that need to be in place for the clean room to operate uh, properly. The temperature needs to be controlled uh, to, to a very high precision. The humidity needs to be controlled as well in order to have the, uh, the photolithography process work properly. We need a very clean water. Uh, it's, uh, the space itself obviously needs to stay very clean. It turns out that inside the clean room, the, 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 dirtiest, the dirtiest thing there is generally you. And so that's why we, we get gowned up. The full suit is to protect the clean room. Uh, the other way the, uh, the clean room stays clean is, uh, is through the air changes that go through the clean room. And there are about 420 air changes an hour. The reason the clean room needs to stay dust free is because the size of the features that we're making on our chips are, are rather small. So for instance, a human hair is about 50 to maybe 100 microns in size. And the, the, uh, the smallest dimensions that we do in our clean room optically are about a half micron, maybe 0.4 microns. And so something that is uh, uh, seemingly very, uh, very small, like a half micron dust particle, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is large enough to, to ruin a device when it lands in the wrong spot. 
So now we can look at a variety of different science applications and try and understand what's the nature of the material that we're looking at or the process that we're looking at. What we're doing here is, is helping the nation, again, to, 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 to do measurements better to enable, uh, to enable new, new technologies that really wouldn't have existed otherwise.